you need to know that God loves you. Get ready. Today's show is going to bring you hope. Hello and welcome to the Strong Tower Mental Health Podcast. I am your host, Heidi Mortensen. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I am so thrilled to have with me back Angela Greening. Hello, Angela. Hey, it's so good to see you. I'm super excited for this time with you um, because I just have been praying so much that God if we ever needed the family counseling, mm. to help direct and guide your sons and daughters for their families, it's now. And mm. then we have someone, I love that you call it Strong Tower, mm -hmm. because he is our strong <laughs> tower. Uh, there was a song years ago that was called The Strong Tower, and I yeah. am still. So yeah. Wow, that is so good. Well, it is so wonderful to have you. Um, I have had you on my show two times already, and I have seen you in person. Um, yes. This has been a relationship that, you know, has been an ongoing relationship. And for anybody who doesn't know you, I'd love if you could just introduce yourself and let them know who you are. And, um, and we can, of course. yeah, absolutely. Well, the coolest thing is that um, last month I stepped into my 44th year in ministry. Wow. And so I just kept thinking, Lord, what an honor mm -hmm. to have that opportunity. And a lot of people that do know me, I'm in warfare ministry. I'm a seer, which is a little bit different than a prophet. And I'm a violent warrior for God. Yes. And he is calling us to rise up in this hour. Yeah. But actually on Thursday, I turned 65. I've been so flipping excited. I can't even sleep. Larry's like, what's wrong with you? I go, the number 65 means the blessing uh -huh. of the Lord. Wow. I'm for what God's doing right now in this hour. Wow. And I was at 58. I was illegitimate. My parents mm -hmm. are married to other people. Uh, we were very poor. I was sexually abused at four. By the time I was nine, I was dealing drugs and smoking cigarettes and being all that I thought and then some. Mm -hmm. And uh, before I knew it, my parents divorced at 11 and we had all these different, like if you will, boxes mm -hmm. in my life that I just kept pushing everything down into because yeah. I never was taught how to even embrace like a, a situation or a problem. Yeah. I remember... I was almost 19 it was the first time I ever heard I was loved by my family, my parents, mm -hmm. my mom, not my dad, but my mom, she had a hard time articulating it. And it took me years to walk through just that upbringing. But then by the time I was 17, I was a stripper, a prostitute. Mm -hmm. um, I was a junkie for years, you know, alcoholic. I tell people the only two things I never did, I was never a lesbian um, with a woman and I never um, murdered anyone, but that's pretty much it. So yeah. I've been shot, stabbed before I was saved. I mean, I really, a friend of mine told me that you live like 10 lives, you know, mm. like you live 10 lives. Yeah. And a lot of people ask me because yeah. of all the hardship of being molested and passed around, like as a child into my adulthood, I just turned it around. I thought, well, you know how you think. And um, people say to me, Angela, how did you get through that? Because many, Heidi, it, I know it doesn't make sense, but many people are so bound by their past to like yes. tether to yes. that pole. Yes. And I chose not to be tethered to that pole. Yeah. But I'll tell you, it was a battle for years to get set free, especially in the demonic realm. Because yeah. I remember, you know, at four years old, I knew JFK was going to be killed and his brother was next. I knew when like the hurricanes came or floods or all these different things growing up because I yeah. saw it. And I, even though no one understood like what I was dealing with, they were afraid of me. Yeah. And so they shunned me even more because they don't get the gift would um, back in that time. Mm. But God walked me through every single bit of it so that I could come out to the other side and yeah. be able to help other people. Right. And so that's where my journey began. And then I'm buried, you know, I'm, 44 years in October with Larry, but we were married and divorced a few times. So how to get it right, how to get healed, because no one thought we needed to get healing until you get to that place, that crossroad. 
Mm. When God, when you come to the place he's all you have, you know in your heart that he's all you yeah. And I have to trust him because it was very hard to trust. And yeah. I believe today that even Christians are still having a hard time trusting and believing that yeah. God loves them, has a purpose and a plan yeah. to give them an expected Absolutely. End. You know, they yeah. just, they, cause they go, well, I don't understand why am I still, you know, plagued with the dreams and different things. And honestly, Heidi, I yeah. have learned the power of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. I had to learn how to forgive others. I'm like, no, 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 God, you can forgive me, my sins, my iniquities, my trespasses, but I'm not forgiving that person for what they did to me. And Lord says, well, we'll just go around that mountain one more time, little girl. So that's how we talk. That's how he talks to me. I'm like, okay, let's go around it. And after a while, I was like, God, I don't know how to forgive. But if you, I think that's a word for people out there today. If mm-hmm. If you don't know how to forgive, I just cried one day and said, Mother, I don't know how to forgive, but if you will show me and help me on this yeah. journey that I'm going yeah. into, I'll be okay. And Heidi, I swear by the spirit of God, it was not even a whole day. And it was it was broken. I was like, Come on. Lord, what yes. is that for? Why yes. did I wait so long? And he said, yeah. you're trying to control something you had no control Come over. on. That and is we're, a, we're that's all what we time, do. We're pushing down our emotions. Yeah. Oh, and the lord said if you're frustrated be frustrated it's yes. okay yes. or angry you're mad or happy that's you're so joyful. good that's so good but this I, is me all these yeah. years later <laughs> yeah i actually just said that to some of my therapists the other day i said when we don't allow ourselves to feel our feelings it's like we're choking on food and it's so okay. if you don't good. digest it then you're mm-hmm. choking on it yeah, yeah, and it yeah. doesn't get processed and exactly. allow it to be nutrients for your body. Yeah. So emotions are not a bad thing and God gave them to us. So thank you so much for sharing Oh yeah, a little bit of your story. If anybody wants to, they can go back and watch some of her previous episodes, but I would or love go to, to my, to my yeah. website. And yes, Google. or go, yes, go to I get TV all over the world and podcast and whatever books. Yeah. And- and all. Yes, yeah. Angela has a podcast and she has a website, angelagreening.com, and she has amazing books that are very, very good. I just I I go back to your, I think it's the the one about the darkness where Power it comes. authority. I go to yes. that one all the time. Me and I'm like, too. okay, which, which I gotta get a new which, one soon. Oh, I've been coming back over and I'm like, wow, that, what a revelation. Yeah. It is like a nugget constantly. It's so good. And so this is what I have navigated myself. And I would really love to know if you could kind of help help with this. So I am a therapist. Okay. I would say I was a watered down Christian. Okay. Didn't know I was watered down. So I step out and I start learning about the things of God that he actually moves, that miracles happen. I find out there's actually demons, but many people don't know that and don't understand that. And so you talk about it like you're like, yep, this, this was real. I had demons. How, how can you help explain to somebody who does not believe that demons are real, that they are? Cause that's your world. Like you see that is my world. in the unseen world. So talk about that. And then also what God's doing right now. Okay. Well, you know what, when people tell me that Satan's not real, I go, whenever you say that, it just really re-emphasizes how real he really is because he's a liar and he's Mm. out to steal, kill and destroy John 10, 10. Mm. But in the word in Ephesians 6, God says, be strong in me in the power of my might, put on the full armor that you may be able to stand against the wiles, which are the devil, the demons and the enemy that comes against you. Our fight is not against people in flesh and blood, but it is a spiritual battle that we are in. Principality, powers, rulers, spirits of wickedness and demons. 25% of Jesus' ministry was deliverance ministry yeah. with demons and i love in mark five because it breaks down all five dimensions because there was a man who had no sound mind and he was so demon possessed heidi you know the story he was chained nobody could take care of it and then boom the presence walks in and everything shifts in the atmosphere yeah. and all of a sudden things move so quickly and yeah. God is like but i'm I'm the son of the living God. He doesn't have to say anything. The demons go, we know who you are. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I, to this day, I just did a, I was just recently somewhere and did a mega deliverance and the demons are like, but we know who you are. I go, that's okay. Because I know who you are too. And that's all I need to know. Because they're so stupid. They expose themselves. I'm like, you don't want to mess with this today. God will take you down so quick. Exactly. But people don't realize that, listen, demons cannot summon them self 
a door has to be open. People have generational curses. You know, people say, I look like my mom, my mom, act like my mom, you know, but I also had the demons that she was dealing with as well. You know what I'm saying? And to yes. her free and me free. I actually did deliverances on my mother a few times. Mega deliverances where wow. things were fine in the room and you could smell it walking across. And she didn't even remember waking up. She goes, do you still want to go to the mall? I go, maybe we should go home and get you a shower first after it, you know? Wow. And even the pastor tweaked out because it was such a violent deliverance she had. But yeah. the generational curse got broken. Wow. And I believe that a lot of people are dealing with a generational curse Yes. And they realize that there's demonic entity around them. Yeah. I, thought it was my I thought it was me. I thought everybody must see these demons. Everybody mm -hmm. must see light and dark angels, demons. They must know that. And I thought, Lord, do people not understand that we can't, we can't open that door. They have to be brought in. But then also... Over 2,000 times an hour, our mind is bombarded by the enemy, sound, smell, go back to the garden. I wrote a book, Five for Five, mm. um, a DVD I made on the five senses, because we are going by what we see, what we hear, what we taste, feel. The yeah. enemy knows that. Yeah. I know he knows, and he's real. Yes. And again, you know... I love what Paul says in Acts. He goes, you know, the demon goes, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know, but he was saying to the other sorcerer, but like, who are you, you know? Yeah. And I've had to deal with that so, but I've had so, the highest level of the occult delivered many, many times from with different people. And yeah. they all know who I am. And they yeah. remind me, you know, it was so weird. I was just recently with a friend and they were like, do you remember the time that your, your brakes and your car went out? And I go, yeah, I was going down a hill and they went out and I knew, Heidi, that it was a curse being spoken upon me. People don't believe the psychic realm is real. All you have to do is go and turn on your news. Maybe not your local news, but another news channel just for like 10 or 20 minutes and then pray over your mind. And you will see such filth and darkness. I have to say this. I hope it's okay, but whatever. On July 4th of this year, um, from the White House to the church house, it's still ringing strong. There's a shaking going on and an abomination that is sitting in the seat of authority at that White House. There was a transgender because he opened up the 4th of July for all to come. And yeah. a transgender who had implants lifted up their shirt and showed oh, on their the chest house. to the world on yeah. the 4th of July on in front of, you know, and I'm still like shaking over that thought. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, now ain't nobody going to tell me that that's a God. You know, that is such darkness and deception and filth. Yeah. And yeah. twisting of the enemy. And that's the kind of propaganda that man is throwing on people right now. Right. So people still do not think, you know, that it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, the demonic side. I mean, it's like we have to start recognizing things. And I tell people too, there is not a demon behind every rock, you know, like everything. You have to discern a spirit. That's out of 1 Corinthians 12. You have okay. to hear the voice and discern his spirit. Lord, yeah. is this of you? Is yeah. there something I need to shut a door on? Yeah. Because maybe I get pulled real easily because I want to help the world. Mm -hmm. And I realize, Father, I some people really just need to shut doors in their lives. It's so simple. They go. I was doing um, television a few years back with Elijah, with Steve Schultz. Yeah. You know, Angela, how do people get delivered? I go, like, you mean a self-deliverance? He goes, yes, mm -hmm. I never had a deliverance. I had legions, trust me, many and many legions. He goes, how did you get delivered? I said, I just stood there and prayed the word of God. I stood and I let that devil know enough is enough. You're not pushing me around anymore. I will not be chained and tethered to that fence anymore. Yeah. God came and set me free. And that's when the Lord taught me out of Jude. It talks about twice dead. You are not saved. You're in great darkness. You give your heart to Jesus. All is going great. But because the word and you're maybe not going to church around Christians, yeah. you know, your, your heart and mind were good things to get set free. Yeah. You kept falling back into the world. And that is twice dead. And Heidi, I believe many people are in that realm right now. Wow, Which, that's a good it's, word. It's I, a scary, but it's in Jude. It's a scary word to say because I kept thinking, wow. Lord, what are you trying to tell me? He goes, many of my people are like twice dead right now. Wow, that is a good word. We compromise and fall away, but demons are real. And again, all throughout the New Testament, 25%. I kept thinking, Lord, it's like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You want to make sure we got it, you know? Yeah. Like, 
you had to keep saying, of course, it has to do with the pillars of the Holy of Holies. But that's another time. But the point is that darkness is real. We have to keep an eye right now on our children, especially if they're in public schools. You know, Heidi, I want to say this. Yeah. The one thing that really yeah. has struck me, because I work with the LGB. Many of you know that for probably over 30 years. Well, really almost the entire time I've been saved because I come out of that dark sexual industry and came into the light. Thank you, God. And we have these, you know, we have these drag queens teaching. They're in the libraries and they're reading these filthy books to these kids. And Larry and I were a few weeks ago talking about that and praying. I'm like, they're trying to, they think that our kids are seeking an audience with them or their parents are. But really those the uh, drag queens are seeking an audience with our children. Mm -hmm. So as they got grown men dressed up as women and just the filth and the clothing and and it's almost like anything seems to go now. But there is a war cry like, rising up from the earth, and God yeah. keeps saying, "Enough is enough." Yeah. So and how? He, yeah. Oh. So how does somebody recognize the doors that are open, and then how do they close them? Well, a lot of people, like a lot of Christians right now, when COVID hit, which is a coronavirus, corona means the crown of the devil. And so the enemy hit and lied and he kept people isolated, fearful. People started drinking. I had a lot. I have some friends, not a lot, but well, in my world, it would be a lot. And they go, you know, I just started getting overwhelmed and, and I just started drinking. And I go, well, you mean like a glass of wine or something? They go, no, like the whole bottle. And before wow. I knew it, I was drinking all the time and smoking. And and some of my friends that used to be pastors are now not. Wow. Um, so entrapped by the darkness. Wow. You know? And I know, right? And so I'm like so hardcore. I mean, Larry calls me sister religiosity, my husband. He's like, babe, you don't want to breathe wrong. And I go, Larry, it's not that I don't want to breathe wrong. It's just that I live a life dedicated to God. And when I see something that's not right, I open my mouth, which is yeah. the other thing. Yeah. Because I believe we can't keep being quiet. But if you... If you realize there's things drawing you, like, I hope it's okay to say this, but I have more emails coming in where people feel like, you know, the sexual revolution has hit them or something and things are getting real weird out there and, mm. can't be, and bother, you know, that's a door that has to be shut. Yeah. I want to say this to the women. You don't have to go into some filthy store and buy all this lingerie and all these things to make your husband happy. Yeah. because God ordained husband and wife to be of one heart and to be beautiful and when you're married it is a beautiful thing not to have to go over the other side but people are drinking they're more hateful um people are so caught in the political cycle yeah that they're angry and raged they're murderous that's all the yeah. spirit of jealousy it's yeah. in the book but it's like yeah. they become like murderous I'm like y'all need to be shutting that door yeah where's Jesus in this right and they go, right. well, I can't, they go, I can't pray. I go, well, I pray every day for uh, President Biden that he would get radically saved before Satan drags his soul to hell. It is what it is. And I pray he doesn't die because we can't have him die and have VP step in. Because if that's the case, if we think things are bad, we have no idea what's coming. But I said, God spoke in the last couple of days and gave me the word. He said, daughter, I'm on the move. Just like I was. Uh it's like we're, we've been in Babylon. I think people think yeah, we're that, never get out of this. And yeah. God spoke to me the seven days into the pandemic. And besides two words, he said, in the absence of order, chaos erupts. In the absence of light, darkness will prevail. Is there light going off within you? Or is there more darkness trying to pull you where you become so used to it? Now you only want to go to church anymore. You don't want to give, yeah. you don't want to pray, whatever. That's what, it, that's what it feels like. I feel like there's a lot of people where they're just so distracted and and they mm -hmm. even get clouded by even watching things. And it's like their mind is getting perverted and they're like, oh, well, it's not that bad. It's not that oh, it bad. And, and they'll get really sucked into it and not even realize that it's happening. It's And so I appreciate this word that you're giving right now that's why i said i hope you know i can't help myself i have to be obedient to the lord yeah because of the the genre of work you do it's important yeah people are getting so sucked in and yeah. they don't even realize it and so you know i right. tell people if you're starting to you know people overeat and that's off a spirit of heaviness 
Yeah. And God, but I haven't given you a spirit of heaviness, but the anointing of oil for joy, yeah. it takes away the heaviness and brings beauty because people yeah. are overweight. They're this, they're that. And they go, I don't understand. I go, that's because you eat out of your emotion because right. you're trying to push down something that needs to get healed. But mo most times people don't, well, you know this, they don't want to deal with it. Right. And so what they need to do they're is scared. bring it to the Lord, like you said, yes. and you told God, I'm having a hard time forgiving. I'm struck and, and whatever that emotion is bringing it to yeah. the Lord and saying, That's God, true. I'm struggling with this emotion and, and being real with God and feeling your feelings with God and not shoving them down. Like you're saying, exactly. Cause that's yeah. the part that scares me when mm -hmm. I, cause I counsel all the time. Cause I, you know, or I have two ordinations. I have, even before I got saved, I was taking psychology courses in college because I was wow. trying to understand myself. Oh yeah. I wasn't saved. Right. I was like, I don't understand who right. I am. And right. maybe if I go in here, I'll start to learn. But actually, I got more confused because I didn't have God in the mix of it. But the point was, yeah. I'm so desperate. And yeah. I believe that there are people out there, you have doors that have to be shut. You know, you don't want to say anything. You don't want to step on anyone's, you know, feelings or whatever. But even in people's households, things are yeah. not good. Yeah. Because you know, our job as if our son and daughter were younger, you know, um, I thank God that they're adults and happily doing well and married, but I kept thinking like, Lord, you know, if I had a child in school, it would be just horrific mm -hmm. to have to deal because you have to deal with the LGB. You have to deal with all this craziness that's going on and people are uprising and this, um, you know, people, the gender, but also their, you know, their nationality. This one wants to be heard. This one doesn't feel like they have a voice. And, and the kids are so confused because they're so vulnerable. Right. And even in our houses, like, you know, I was laughing. I was just with friends and they're like, no, you can't watch that. No, you're not going there. No, you can't do this. And I just kept smiling mm. because, you know, even though the kids don't like it, it's like, it doesn't matter. It's not about you. It's about your whole well-being when you get older. Yeah. So what, what that does, what you, cause you were talking about open doors. If you allow yeah. your kids to watch something, it's an open door, like right and there. Too. Yep. And adults like, okay, if, oh, I'm not, the porn's no big deal. Let's just watch it it's an open door and all of a sudden so what happened tell us what happens in the unseen world and then i'll have you pray for okay. us okay what in happens when we open these doors like what do okay. you see in the unseen if you world you could see right now like i always tell people in psalm 103 uh, 20 it talks about release the angels to do the bidding hmm. well a lot of times i'm in a room and I, I see the angels all around it's almost like they're waiting for someone to release them to go to work for the lord because that's wow as he sends his angels forth to go before us wow. and so but the darkness is there and the doors are opened and i'm dealing with someone right now their husband started watching one time mm -hmm. um something came across the screen and it's pornography and now they're hook line and sinker but they don't want to give it up and you know what i kept saying lord you already know things are in trouble and we have to start standing for our families. And I want to say this because I know it's very difficult out there having to stand up for truth and justice and the fight against that spirit. But I, I want to say this. I wrote Power and Authority. I mean, Destiny put this out a couple of years ago, but I have many books. And this is about the 16 demonic strongholds, how they operate. And I, I teach people what they are, what to look for and how to pray after every one. Yeah. And how to come against witchcraft curses, because that's really big right now. Yeah. But if it's pornography, alcohol, drugs, if people are just, you know, all the twisting and manipulation and, you know, God is saying right now, if you could see in the spirit realm, it is much, our future is so bright. Yeah. And a lot of people right now are very hopeless. It's like Jeremiah 28. And God says, and they were carried off into Babylon. Yeah. But, but now that we are in prayer, we are warring, we are fighting. And this right. nation is rising up, not just yeah. we grabbed a hold of and fighting back for the abortion. Thank you, God. But yes. we gotta hold on to, we have to hold the line tight. Yeah. It's all about warfare now. And as we do that, God says, I'm going to move so powerfully. He said, I will break the yoke off of the enemy's neck. Come on. Run that White House, the abomination that is there. And the Lord is saying over and over to me, he said, and daughter, just like in Jeremiah, 29 boom that yoke of iron i'm going to put around him and pray that they repent and get their hearts right back into the lord yes. because something has to really start to move because i keep thinking you know lord we are called to be a reflection of who you are not to water things down yes amen 
we have just opened up these doors and said, well, it's okay if this is okay. I work in a Catholic church and you know, the Pope even has things about, it's okay about the LGB. And I'm like, I don't know what Bible you're reading, sir, but apparently it ain't the Holy Bible because that's not what God's word says. Whether it's in Genesis 28 or back into Romans, God is talking all the time. Man will not lay with man. Woman will not lay with woman. You know, all these things. And he says, well, we put stipulations when you go to church. And I thought, well, I would have a husband and wife. I'd have stipulations. Like, don't be sitting there thinking you're going to make out or something. This is church it's a holy ground honey take that outside you know what i'm saying yeah and many times when we had our church we had lesbians come in homosexuals all the time i'm like y'all need to sit there boom and then guy would just start to move mm -hmm. but it's just you know it's appropriate so now we're at a place in time where the darkness is so prevalent mm -hmm. that if people can see in the spirit room like i don't sleep too much i mean i sleep some and then some days i don't sleep for days uh, maybe an hour or so, and I just get caught up into heaven. I get refreshed and come back. And I said, Lord, the darkness, like the ancient of demons have been released for years, but now it's really on the move. Okay. Of God, the darker the dark, the lighter yeah. the light. Because yeah. we're called to be the light of the world. Amen. And we're lighting our a light, it says in Matthew, he says, don't hide your light. Yeah. You know, because if you do, um, I love it. He says, you're, you know, he said, we're to be the salt of the earth. And I kept thinking, God, where is that salt shaker today? I hear it is. It's right here. He reminded me this one. He says, daughter, remind my sons and daughters that you are, you are the light, but it's a real light. He said, but you are the salt of the world. And if the salt loses its flavor, which in that text means faith, throw it away. I kept saying, Lord, I don't want to, I'm not compromising anything. I won't be liked much. That's okay. People don't understand who I am anyway. I just got off a plane and it was so violent. I was in D.C. four hours on a plane out of five hours. It was so violent. Um, wow. it, I've never had experience going in like that and coming home. And I was in such violent warfare. People kept looking at me and they go, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever it is, every time you you pray, things start to settle. And then when you stop praying, it gets real crazy. I said, that's because of the demonic atmosphere. And I thought, Lord, if this plane goes down, wow. people go get saved or else. So when you got people that are not Christians that are recognizing things, wow. that makes you open your eyes and go, you know what? Something is wrong. Are we going to be able to take out all the darkness in retrospect? It was here from the garden to where we are. God created the garden in holiness. Yeah. So he could walk with us. But right. now we're in a place, you know, where we have to be able to stay clothed in him. I love, God says to Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam, mm -hmm. where are you? He said, we are hiding um, because we are naked. And God says, who told you you were naked? Who says? So I tell myself all the time, really just about every day, who says that you are not called to be in warfare ministry just because we don't understand it when they all get in trouble, which they do right. from the mega to the least, you know, the upper yeah. echelon to the least of them. God says they all call out and ask you to help the war and pray because they know if you do, boom, things are going to break and things are going to shift in the atmosphere right. because of the warfare. I believe Heidi Guide. Bottom line, God is rising up in this hour and he is calling for, especially the mothers in this hour to rise up and to be the warrior that God has called you to be for your family, for your children. Because if we don't fight for them, who will? You know, our husbands, they go to work, they're in filthy. My husband's the only Christian in his place. He said, you just can't believe this stuff I have to deal with every day. And then when everything gets crazy, he's the one that suffers. And I said, that's because God's favor is so bright on you. It's so big, your angels, that they can't stand it. The demons in that place every day. And so it just, you know, and it re-encourages him again, you know, because he's yeah. like, but our, our guys are going through it. Our kids are going through it. As women, we go through it. But right. the bottom line, many of you have doors that are open that you don't want to shut. Yeah. You're sitting there just, I want to say this in love, you're sitting there just not coddling the demon, but you're like, well, you know, I've been really sad and depressed and I'm scared. So I'm just going to overeat or I'll drink or I'll take that pill or mm -hmm. I don't know, these stores with a pot and everything else. People are like, it's okay. And we're like, no, mm -hmm. in my world, it's not. Because I, I just had a neck surgery. I've had five major surgeries in two and a half years. Wow. And they just try to give you that was a weirdy cat. I call it medication. They're like, well, go to the pot store. I'm like, why? I'm safe. Wow. I'm set free. I don't do drugs. Even Christian um, doctors have said, well, you know, God created this stuff. And I go, yeah. And then people add junk into it. And then when he adds in junk into it, there's no creation. It just becomes a drug. Right. right. Somebody else gets hooked on. I'm like, I'm hooked on Jesus. I'm good.
Yeah. That's all I can, I can as Starbucks, just being real. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Angela, I would love it if you could pray yes, for our help. listeners yes. and just let the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yes, Lord. I know it's been a whirlwind, Father, but in the wind of your Holy Spirit is when you start to move. And I feel, Lord, like we're at that time with Elijah and he had gone through so much heartache and such darkness alone. But then it was time to go through the city gate. God, you're calling us to go up a pyre. And Lord, you weren't in the earthquake or the wind or the fire, even though in the natural we thought that, but in the spirit and it's still very quiet voice. You spoke to Elijah. I believe right now, Lord, you've been speaking to your sons and daughters. You have to start getting rid of some of these things that are infiltrating your mind. The TV shows that you watch, that you try to say, well, you know, it's okay. Or maybe alcohol or whatever the case may be. And you just keep saying, well, it'll be okay. But Father, I pray today that you would touch the hearts of your sons and daughters and that you would start to move and expose those things that have re-gripped them or maybe rebound them and that you would loose the love of your spirit to come in and just touch them and set them free. Brother, I know this program has been a whirlwind today, but in the wind and in the world, they're going to catch the right thing at the right time. And my heart is that for America, our nation would have, again, a godly person in the White House that loves you, Lord, and that will bring this nation back to you, God, because I know things will start to shift from the head to the heads of the households to the children and to their children's children. Father, we release the blessing over all of us today, Father, and those that are hurting physically, emotionally, that you would just bring healing to their minds with clarity. I think for some of you out there, you just need to say, Lord, I just surrender it all. I've been trying to run everything by myself and I'm making a mess of it and I'm falling deeper and deeper in my mess. If you call them out to him today, Psalm 85 says, if you call on me, I'll answer. Jeremiah 33, I have promises for you with destiny today, and I will bring it into fruition. Watch and see what I'm getting ready to do. And I bless every household that hears this, whether it's a year from now or 20 years, if you still be it, Lord. And uh, just that they would be encouraged and stirred up and to remember who they are, powerful and mighty in the Lord. And I just thank you, Father, that you guard and protect all that we have. And we ask everything in your son, Jesus name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank just, you so much. Thank you. It was a whirly just, world. Yeah. And if anybody wants to purchase any of Angela's books, you can get them from her website or on Amazon. And it's Angela Greenig, G-R-E-E-N-I-G dot com. Yes. And she's also has a podcast. You can find her on YouTube as well. Yes. So please make and sure Patricia to go. King. Oh, I'm yes. a Patricia King since over five. I have Kingdom play my own television I TV oh. overseas. So awesome. that's why I said it's always a trolley world. The media, the media, the media. Yes, exactly. It's well, thank so you. Good. Thank well, you we're so gonna much. Shift because I'm going to get ready in a few minutes and I'll come back and we'll get your interview in. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Bless you guys. Love everyone. God bless you.